Previously on Super Idols RPG, you write a really great first draft of this song. I would probably have it more rock, but every so often shift slightly in genre to, I guess I touch on everyone's genre at least a bit. This looks really good. I'm really interested to see how it sounds. I mean, it looks really good from what I can see. And Karen actually raises a hand and says, I have some software at home. I could make a demo if you need one. Yes, I wanted to try doing that, but I have no idea how to use any of that stuff. Looks like we have a producer. And she goes over to try to like basically just shake all your hands like, hello, hello, my name's Amberly. It's nice to meet everybody. Karen, she actually says, Oh, Karen, it's so nice to see you again. I'm, you're back for another year, I see. Oh, that's great. I, we always need your your infectious cheerleading spirit. And Karen gives her like a slow thumbs up. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. And Drac. Hi. And it's it's just the delightful duo today. <laughs> no no guests, <laughs> no like, like big groups, just like just a couple of pals being pals. I think I might have said that for the last duo session too. I guess I don't have <laughs> a lot of ways to intro these sessions yet. <laughs> Oh, I so. like the delightful, delightful duo. <laughs> I do too. Okay, so today we are continuing on from the last session where you ended off sort of with the new group name and the promise of more group sessions and practice to come in the week following. What best way to explain this? I will say in the previous session with T and Luca, we did do a idle activities move to determine how their practice and preparations for the gig went during the week. And I will do that with the both of you as well. And because they rolled really well on their move, I'm actually going to give you both a plus two on this move to represent how well your teammates helped you do Ooh. this. Ooh. Oh one no, for, that's one a for each of them. Now we have to do well as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I guess the first thing we're, we're launching straight into a move is we're going to do idle activities. Uh, just to, well, I guess before we actually roll the move, why don't you both tell me what you've sort of been doing for the, the week after the last session leading up to Saturday. Like, what kinds of practice you've been doing, what kind of stuff you've been doing to sort of psych yourself up, any research or outside sort of preparations that you're doing. Oh, I think Jaden was probably, like, watching... I think we call it idol tube. Idol tube videos of any idols like playing the keys or the drums, just seeing if you can learn anything from them, since they're definitely more experienced and probably like practicing those, and maybe seeing if you can add anything to the like music he's written so far. That makes sense. <laughs> I think you definitely would find probably some good Bomb Bomb Brothers videos. Oh, they yeah. have a very well explosive sound, but they certainly are not all <laughs> percussion either. <laughs> So they probably have a key. One of them is probably a keyboardist. So yeah, I think we can definitely include, like, say how well your songwriting goes and how well, like, you're practicing your keyboarding skills goes. And how about for Valerie? I think Valerie has also been watching IdleTube because a while ago Angie mentioned that she watches Starry Night Skies videos on on how to be a super idol. So Valerie's been watching some of those tutorials and also trying to find a secluded and safe from other people place to practice a sort of singing and using her powers at the same time because that's sort of where she got into trouble before was not keeping her powers under control. Oh, okay. Where do you think you've been practicing that sort of thing? Like just in the club room after the others leave or did you find like a particular other place do you think? I think... It would be somewhere outside and kind of isolated because she's still worried about hurting someone else. Like, she's trying to sort of do the equivalent of, like, 
rubbing your stomach and patting your head uh, or like trying to move herself around on a psychic platform while also spinning swords around so she wants to be somewhere with with space and no one around oh okay so maybe like a park at night or something like that that nobody's gonna be at yeah yeah that would make for a lovely picture of like Valerie dancing and crossing platforms and swirling swords around in the moonlight. I love that. Mm -hmm. Like the edgy goth that she is. Oh yes, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh yeah, I just love how it's an edgy goth and absolutely opposite. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is going to be a fun session. But anyway, yes, I think idle activities can definitely represent both of those. I think do we want to roll you both together? Those are both fairly separate activities. We rolled it together for T and Luca, but their characters are both dancers, so it made sense to roll them both together. I guess I'll let you two decide. Do you want to roll it both together or both separately? I would like to roll it separately because yeah, I if think so. at least one of us might do well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Only>. sure. <laughs> All right. In that case, I'll, I'll split the plus two and I'll give you each plus one. Okay. One, one from each of your teammates. That makes sense. And the description for the move again, I'll read out. So, when time passes and one or more team members work on an idle-related activity, everyone participating says what they're doing and a representative for the group makes a flat 2d6 roll. Add one to this roll if the whole team is working toward the same goal. I would give you that because it's all towards getting ready for the gig. Add plus one to this roll if at least one participant has no conditions marked. Do you have any conditions currently? No, I don't. Ah. Uh, surprisingly, me either. Nice. And subtract one for this roll if one or more team members have spoken out against the activity. That is obviously not the case right now. And we already said that there's no conditions marked, so there's no subtraction for that either. So, on the whole, you are getting a plus three for this roll for Jaden. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so when the when the modifier pops up, you'll just put three in the box. Okay. Uh, three and... Ooh, fingers crossed. Very uh, nice. Yes, that's, that's decent. <laughs> that is it's an eight with the plus three. Um, Oof. <laughs> no, it's, one it's one fine. Of dice. <laughs> <laughs> so on a seven to nine, the group still gains a benefit, but the GM will also detail a complication or obligation that has snuck up in the meanwhile. Hmm. Ooh. I wonder what this could be. Might just be that, like, you're still a little nervy from how the performance on Saturday went, so you don't make as much progress on the song as you wanted to. Uh, but yeah. you're you're doing decently at like improving your technical skills with the keys at least. I think it makes sense, yeah. Yeah. I won't make it a very big complication. <laughs> we'll just give you more room to work on the song with Valerie this session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we'll have Valerie also roll this move. So with you, I believe you'll also get the same plus three because you're you match all the same conditions that Jaden had. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Very nice. That is a ten on that one. So on a All ten, right. so on a ten plus, your idle activities truly sparkle. The GM will detail an opportunity or benefit your group gains from your efforts, and the other part doesn't apply. Okay. So the benefit I think you gain from this is you are able to practice using your powers and singing, and you're able to gain a lot more confidence and control while you do this. And I'm going to say, you might want to write this down on your sheet somewhere in your notes so that you don't forget it, because it might not come into play this session. Uh, But I'm going to give you a plus one on your next Unleash Your Powers, or it's time for my solo move. All right, so I think your your week is going surprisingly well, although there's there's another aspect of this week that I do want to touch on that is separate from that. And that's the fact that... um, that Anne still hasn't shown up for the rest of this week. As she wasn't there on the, the day that you went back to school on Tuesday, Wednesday, and she hasn't really shown up again by the end of the week either. And you haven't received much word about where she's gone. Oh, no. Hmm. Oh, okay. So how are Jaden and Valerie feeling about that? Have they been trying to contact her or look for her? Or what else do you think? Or just kind of worried? I th- I think um, Jaden was probably trying to contact her, probably like messaging her on whatever idol name we came up with for messaging. Her. <laughs> I can't on, remember on what disc it idol, was. yeah. <laughs> disc idol, that's it. Yeah. Although, as um, Maria established, Anne has a very out of date email address and w- refused to explain why she doesn't have a more modern one. <laughs> 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 so you're a little iffy on whether that'll work. Yeah, I I probably even 
try it the email address. <laughs> like, um, I've never written an email before, but are you okay? This is this is Jaden, by the way, just in case you didn't know. I hope I hope everything's okay. We haven't seen you in a while. And just says, lots of love, Jaden, and then sends. Aww. Aww. Yeah, and you, you haven't gotten a response yet, but it has only been, like, a few days, so it's not into, like, full-on panic mode yet. I think Valerie is still trying to act sort of formal and initially sends a message just, like, saying, you know, you missed practice. It's important that we are all present for practice. And then when it becomes uh, more clear that, that something is is really up and, and, and has, has disappeared and is, is not just skipping practice, then sends, like, another message that's that's just like, you there? You okay? And unfortunately, you have not gotten an okay back yet. So we, we might explore more about that ne- in the next group session, mm-hmm. but for, for now, it's only been a few days, so people yeah. are not sure what's up with her, but it's not, like, reason to, like, go on full-on search party just yet. On the, On a similar note, I will say, this one applies more to Valerie, but the club actually did receive word, finally, from Cynthia's family that the family emergency that she was called away for it requires more time away, so actually, um, Cynthia is officially transferring away from Fort McNally at this point. Mm. So you know for sure that Cynthia is not coming back, unfortunately. But it is reassuring, at least, that you you know where she is, or at least you think you do. Yeah, that's kind of reassuring, but also kind of d- disappointing, because, of course, even though she was sort of mysterious and, and not very open, she was one of the first people that Valerie, you know, got to know and befriend Mm -hmm. so far this year. Yeah, it is disappointing for sure, but you certainly know that there there certainly might be something more up than what is being said, given what you suspect Mm -hmm. about her, but at least you have, like, official word from her family that everything is, like, she's fine, at least. And I'm even going to say, like, just for reassurance of the audience's sake, you actually have gotten through some messages to her between you and Angie. Um, and she's been like, yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry. I'm just, I can't be in mm-hmm. this area right now. Yeah. So you yeah, have at least one person you can get in contact with. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's definitely like the, the sort of disappointment of someone you were just getting close to moving away in this case, mm-hmm. not not worried right. about her. Well, maybe worried in the sense that Valerie knows she has her own sort of issues going on that she's she's not open with other people about and knows that it seems like Cynthia has maybe a similar situation, but there's there's not much that Valerie can do about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair enough indeed. But you certainly do have one more founding member of this year's generation of the Idol Club left that you can visit, aside from Angie. Of and course. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, yes, in these few days leading up to Saturday, uh, you have received a few more messages from Karen, who's told you that she's healing up nicely after what happened last Saturday. And she knows that you're working on the song for the club and she's her offer to make a demo for the song still stands. So she has invited Jaden over to sort of work on the instrument stuff with her and Valerie to lay down the vocal track. So the two of you get to visit Karen today. (laughs) Oh, Oh Oh, no, I'm kind (laughs) of scared. What are we going to (laughs) see? This will be fun because um, the audience knows what Karen's place looks like already because we went to it in Alan's solo session, but you you two haven't yet. Oh, no. <laughs> so Karen, she kind of lives out in the suburbs, like the, the very far kind of edge of the school district suburbs. So fairly far away as like this school district goes, but uh, you can still get there by bus or bike or however you choose to travel at least or you can get a ride from your from your aunt if you want Ooh, i think i'd probably bike yeah i think Jaden's probably biking because way he's got his his new guitar strapped to his back of course yeah and yeah he just cycle. he's gonna cycle um to karen's place nice how about valerie how's valerie getting there uh let's say public transportation sure because nothing is more edgy and goth than taking the bus mm-hmm. it's true I mean, at least, at least then plenty of people can, can see you, you know, looking 
annoyed and disappointed that you have to be in public. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, so so you arrive at the the address that Karen gave you. It's it's kind of just a nice like generic looking suburb house, a fairly large house on the end of a row, and you know that she said she lives in the basement suite of this house. So you have to go around to the side entrance uh, where you where there is a separate doorbell that you can ring. Yeah, I think in that case, Jaden probably like rides one up and maybe if there's like a pole or a fence that he can <laughs> like attach his bike to so no one steals it. And then <laughs> maybe, I don't know how early he would be or if it would Valerie be there? Like would they meet at the same time? Yeah, probably at the same time. Yeah, so he'd probably... Like, after locking his bike up, he probably turns and sees Valerie. Hey. Is Valerie already coolly leaning up against the wall? Yes, of course. <laughs> he just turns around like, well, oh, oh, wait, how long have you been waiting? Am, am I late? I know. No, you're on time. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> he just had to go um, Karen's door. And like, just before he presses the doorbell, he turns to Valerie. Um, are you worried about what, what Karen's place is going to look like? I I don't know why I would. Yeah, I guess it's a weird thing to me for me to ask. It's just, she's very special, and I'm honestly a little bit worried. Hmm. You know, never mind, you're here, so it should be fine anyway. Okay, I mean, I wasn't worried. Oh, no, I didn't mean to get you worried. I'm like, you're probably right, there's probably nothing to be worried about. I'm just, okay, I'm sorry. Um, you just let's... press you the doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so you ring the doorbell. Nothing nothing terribly special about that. You hear the, the sounds of someone coming up the stairs on the other side of the door. And sure enough, door opens and there is Karen. And for someone who just got stung by a bunch of bees last week, she's looking surprisingly good. Like there's definitely still like some red marks there uh, where stuff is clearly healing up. But like not as, like, not as much as you would think. Like she... she has mm. been taking care of herself. She's been getting a lot of rest. She's been using a lot of calamine lotion. She's probably been eating her Wheaties. I don't know, whatever you do to help <laughs> bee stings heal. So, yeah, there's definitely some... You can tell that she got stung by some bees, but otherwise she's looking okay. I think the moment she opens the door and Jaden sees that she's okay, he kind of goes, Karen, and just hugs her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hello. Hi, hello. <laughs> and she gives you a hug back oh god you're okay hello i'm i'm really glad to see you're okay very glad to be okay much obliged she kind of reaches an arm out to bring you into the group hug i think Jaden reaches his arm out as well <laughs> valerie awkwardly steps forward and allows herself to be hugged Aww. <laughs> and maybe blushes a little bit oh uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's not like a big hugger, so she it's not like a big bear hug, but uh, she does do, she like brings your brings your arm in, gives you a little pat on the back, and is like, "Oh, it's nice to see you too, Valerie." After a wonderful group hug, I think um, Jane kind of pulls away from and goes, "Okay, let's get down to business." Yes, Karen, so you can help us with putting together a song. Yes, absolutely. You're you're going to be. Amazed, I I am sure. Come, come to Shay Karen, and she she beckons you to come down the stairs. Jada just turns to Valerie. Shay Karen, what, what um, does that mean? <laughs> it it means house. Oh, uh, in French. Oh oh. It's the second official language, don't you know? Valerie has been getting visibly less comfortable as this goes on from, from where she was before. <laughs> I think um, Jane has been very confused, but he's done for it. <laughs> All right, so she she leads you down the stairs to her suite. It's actually like just stairs leading from the door. There's no like access way leading up to the house above. It's just a straight shot down into the basement. So she takes you downstairs. It's a fairly long stairway, and it leads into based on the house above. You would have expected this, but it definitely is a relatively spacious basement suite, as basement suites go. But that's the size of it is not the most impressive thing here. What is is that Karen is clearly like you knew she was a little technically inclined, 
but this is very like a uh, media nerd's dream kind of space. There is a very impressive multi-monitor computer rig set up in the living room, uh, also a big flat screen TV with a bunch of different game consoles from multiple generations. The walls have a lot of poster prints of different musical acts, mostly like popular super idols, but also like just older like musical acts. Like you, there's some there's some Beatles, there's some monkeys, there's some like what are older groups? <laughs> there's some David Bowie <laughs> stuff up there too. It's fine. Beatles, monkeys, and David Bowie are the only ones that actually existed in this universe. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the divergent point of history is like 2006, so everything before then is more or less the same. Uh, but anyways, Whoa. yeah. <laughs> That this is what you see upon going into Karen's living room. Karen, whoa, that I, this is awesome. Yeah, this is this is impressive. Thanks. I do like to keep a happy home. Come, come. And she leads you through the living room to. Uh, there's a door kind of on one side of the room that leads off into another space, and this space is one the one that she had kind of alluded to. Uh, that would be helpful with the making of the song, and you can see why. It is a dedicated recording room, it looks like. It's, it, like, it, it well, clearly wasn't meant to be. It's, like, just another room in the basement, but she has, like, covered it with, like, foam padding, like, sound insulation foam. Uh, she's got another, like, computer set up in there. There's microphones. Uh, there's some sound equipment in there, and there are even, like, there's a, even a keyboard there, and... <laughs> And another electric guitar there. I think Jaden kind of grins at the sight of another electric guitar. <laughs> just, just a little grin to himself. Yeah, Val- Valerie's just looking around, pretty, pretty impressed because she's <laughs> never really seen so much uh, audio equipment just in someone's home. She's just used to having to like go to a studio or a practice space. Karen, do you, do you make, do you play anything? Off and on. Not usually my thing. I like to remix stuff a lot of the time. Mostly like to just produce what other people make. It's kind of been something I've done for the Idol Club in past years. I have... I have no words. I, this is the most professional... Oh, okay, I want to really try that keyboard. And he just <laughs> runs over to the keyboard. <laughs> Yeah, she gives you the little, like, go-ahead kind of motion to let you, like, look at the <laughs> keyboard. So you do you not like playing music, or it just seems like you have clearly know a lot about it and have plenty of equipment? Mmm, I love, I love listening to music, always have. I don't know, it's never been something that I've wanted to do much myself. I don't think I'm much good at it, but... I am certainly a music appreciator, you could call me. I nod and say that I can see that. Like I said, I've I've tried. It's I've gotten some okay stuff together, but I think where I my calling is hmm, making other people's work shine. And she pulls a, a light stick out of her back pocket. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> I love Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Valerie like blushes a little again because this is like it's hard for her to imagine someone not wanting to be in the spotlight. She says, "Oh, well, I'm I'm glad that you're here to help us then." Mm, I'm glad you're here to be helped. Hey guys, do you want to get started? And Jaden just like on the keys like trying stuff out. He's like looking at all the settings and stuff like that. Yeah. So so Karen kind of sits down at her like computer setup pretend I know anything about how a computer setup for audio production works as um, <laughs> you think I would as someone who produces works, a podcast. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so she sits down with some of her equipment and gets it tuned to your keyboard. She gets a microphone set up and connected to the computer uh, for Valerie and uh, starts talking with you about like what you want for the song and like going over the sheet music with you and what instruments you're thinking of. And she starts tinkering with like garage band to see if she can make some virtual instruments for whatever they whatever you don't have right now. Like use there's some synth elements I think that you want in there that the keyboard may or may not be able to replicate. Yeah. And I probably Ooh. I wanna I I wanna put up my guitar and then point at Karen's. Let's go. Hey Karen, do you wanna play with me? 
We can record some of your stuff as well. Oh, okay. I, I'm not sure what we would play. It's been a long time since I've played anything that I did, but I'll see if I can, <laughs> I'll see if I can remember anything. I mean, I, I feel like it's only fair you're helping us create something. I think it'd be fun to create something with you. I turn to Valerie like, is yeah. that okay? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, fair enough. Uh, but certainly she wants to help you with, with your stuff first. So I think she focuses yeah. a lot on, on the both of mm-hmm. you as you're getting stuff together. In the, the meanwhile, I'm trying to think of if, if there's a if there's a move that I wonder if it'd just be another idle activities move that would represent how well this goes. Probably it's the most appropriate move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think as as Karen is setting up the you know, going over the sheet music and setting up the instruments, Valerie is is trying to say sort of diplomatically, because of the way that, that Jaden's performance went a while ago, she's saying, Yeah, I know that the song has a lot of potential. Mm, I think so too. Just based on the sheet music alone, this has a lot of energy that I'm excited to play out. I think Jaden probably hears and it's like, I promise I'll do a lot better than I did last time. I was really nervous, I think, showing you guys what I created. But I'm not nervous anymore. I'm oh, I'm ready. Okay. It's fine. Nerves happen. And she, she very much understands that that, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, there's no reason why you couldn't do this well now. She believes in you. Yep, that's, and that's what practice is for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we're just going to do another idle activities roll. This time we're rolling for the both of you, so just one of you will roll a, as a representative for this roll. Uh, so it is, it's going to be another flat 2d6 roll. And I think it's just going to be the same conditions as last time. So it'll be another plus... It'll be a plus two because two. You're, you already yeah. used your extra plus, yeah. plus two from before. So it'll be a plus two for this one. Let's, Do you want to roll it? I was going to say, let's let's give Jaden another shot. Oh, me. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm a character now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I'm consistent. <laughs> <laughs> That's another eight. That's fine. <laughs> So again, the group gains a benefit, and there's also a complication or obligation that's snuck up in the meanwhile. Hmm. So what can this be, I wonder? So definitely, definitely I think the recording it and writing itself goes well. So why don't, why don't the two of you describe... I have something in mind that I'll bring in oh. at, in a sec. So why don't you two describe to me how how this session goes? It's going to go well for you. So how describe how this goes well. Um, for the, I think Jaden probably sh- shows, hopefully, a much better performance of what he had in mind with just the piano first. And hopefully, like, if there's any improvements that Valerie and Karen think of, like, you know, like, quickly scribbles those down on the sheet of music. And then starts trying it out on the guitar as well to um, see the combination of instruments he had in mind. And it's like a back and forth, I guess. He shows the combination he had in mind and waits to hear Valerie and Karen's feedback. And if they have any suggestions or anything they want to completely change, he kind of does that. I think, yeah, Valerie is nodding along with the, the sheet music and the performance and maybe makes a few suggestions about you know speeding up this, this section or that or, or something like that. But I think as this happens, she starts to actually relax. Like, to, you know, a, a close observer, she kind of shifts from, like, act, you know, pretending trying very hard to pretend to be relaxed to actually relaxing and losing some of the tension that she's been holding in. Oh, I like that. So I guess does that manifest maybe as like you you're, you start maybe singing the, the song at first and it sounds maybe a little like good but kind of unpolished but it sort of gains mm-hmm. more of a looser tone as you go? Uh, yeah, it's like start, starting off singing it like sort of sort of stilted, just hitting each 
note one by one, and then as we practice it a bit and I start to relax, it, it starts to flow together. Nice. Just as you kind of get used to, the, like, how the song is supposed to sound, and Jaden kind mm-hmm. of brings out more of what he has in his head for the song, and you're just kind of getting comfortable with both Jaden and Karen and working with the both of them. Mm-hmm. Very nice. All right, so the, the both of you kind of work together to get more of this song recorded and produced and, like, added to. Like, Jaden comes up with more sections that you'd like to add. Like, maybe there's some more, like, build-up that gets to be added at the beginning before it kind of just, like, launched straight into, like, a heavy guitar. So maybe there's a little more build-up before that. Maybe add a few more instrument tracks that makes the track sound a bit more full. That kind of thing. And as you're kind of wrapping towards the end of this session... Um, Valerie, your phone buzzes. Oh, um, hold, hold on one moment, and I'll... Yeah, yeah, sure. Answer, or I'll, I'll look at who's calling first. Um, it's Mary Rain. Uh, yeah, Valerie goes right back up to, like, full tension, self-control... Oh, no, I feel posture, that Self-control oh, no. posture, <laughs> and, and, and just, like, I, I guess it steps into the other room and answers. Yes? Hello, Valerie, darling. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm preparing for the show right now, in fact. Oh, you are, are you? I'm curious to know where exactly. I'm surprised that I haven't seen you around the studio lately. I was just remarking to Grace about that, that we hadn't seen you lately. I'm most curious to know how your preparations are going, apparently without the resources of Rain Shadow. Well, I've been working closely with the other club members. I, um, of course, this is a gig with myself in the lead, but I think that it will go more smoothly overall if they are included in the process, including the planning and producing. I suppose that is true. I did include the rest of your little group, because I know that you are just starting out and having... Some backup there as insurance is prudent for this sort of thing. But please don't forget, Valerie, darling, this is a Rain Shadow sponsored event. And it is supposed to promote you as the star attraction. And we at Rain Shadow want to make sure that our mark is left on your performance. And we were hoping to see you oh, maybe tomorrow by the studio to go through a few songs for your set list, perhaps record with a a few of our session musicians? Of course. We are working on uh, our own headlining song for the the show, but uh, of course, using the resources for filling out the set list is, is obviously the best way to utilize what you are offering me. That's that's why I joined Rain Shadow. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Of course, you will have to get approval from me for your headlining song to make sure it is worthy of being called such. So when do you think you'll be able to show me what this song is? We should have a demo ready for when I meet with you tomorrow, and we're going to continue producing it and, and practicing until the show. Excellent, excellent. So I suppose I will see you around the studio, let's say, one o'clock tomorrow? Of course. Perfect. And I should say this whole conversation (laughs) is probably going to be another attempt at an influence shift. I'm going to say, let's, oh, what would be most appropriate here? Probably it would be another uh, freak up and save you down, because that seems to be what Mary likes for you. I'm going to uh, attempt to reject influence here. Oh, very cool. Okay, so you're going to roll to reject Mary's influence. Let's see how that goes. Uh, No bonuses or penalties, so... All right, so that is a nine. On a seven to nine, uh, choose one. You can either clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong. You can shift one label up and one label down, your choice. Or you can cancel their influence and take plus one forward against them. Hmm. I'm going to shift one label up and one label down. Okay, sure. What would you like to shift? 
I am going to shift Savior down, but I'm going, instead of Freak, I'm going to shift Superior up. Okay. Perfect. So that will put you at a Savior 0, Superior 1. So you're... <laughs> How, how I f this feels like in my head is that you're you're smiling and nodding along to Mary on the phone, but you're you're secretly feeling like you know better than her in the back mm -hmm. of your mind or something like that. Yeah, this is basically trying to stay calm while telling her what she wants to hear more so than than letting it sink in. I like that. I like that interpretation of it. All right, so so Mary tells you, yes, I'll see you at one p.m. tomorrow, then, darling. Toodles, and she hangs up. And I walk back into the room, and I say, um, so that, that was, that was someone from Rain Shadow Records, and they would like a demo of our song by tomorrow, so that they can approve it for the set list for the show, since they are sponsoring the show. Oh boy. And I, I think I said before that the Keen Observer could see Valerie becoming more relaxed, she is very, very obviously tense and has her arms crossed as she enters and says this. Oh, um, Karen, do you think we'd be ready for a demo, like, so soon? I don't see why not. I'm a bit of a night owl. I could have it ready by first thing in the morning. Could that be awesome? Um, Valerie, are you, are you okay? Oh, of, of course, you know, the... Studios resources are one of the things that I am bringing to the group, so um, I'm glad that uh, everyone else can keep up. I think Jaden just kind of raises an eyebrow, but doesn't push any further. <laughs> it's clear that Valerie probably doesn't want to go into depth about what's actually going on, so he doesn't he doesn't try and push it. Yeah, Karen is tilting her head and assessing. I think. <laughs> About whether she wants to say something or not, because I think she clearly can sense that something is up as well. But <laughs> whether Valerie wants to talk about it or not is another question. Well, I think Jane goes, oh, while, while you were um, on the phone, we actually did a, added a few more changes. And he just kind of tries to, because he saw that um, Valerie seemed a lot more relaxed when they were working on the music. So <laughs> she's trying to like jump back in and hopefully help uh -huh. Valerie relax a bit more by jumping back into the music. Like, so yeah, Karen actually recommended we add, we speed up this part as well and just like points it out on the music oh, sheet. yeah. You see her like highlight a track and then like kind of quickly her fingers like fly across the keyboard and you notice that the, the name of the track has changed to Mary Rain Stinky Poo Head. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not going to say anything. She's just going to do that. And she just starts going into like what the change on the, that particular line of the track is. Valerie quickly covers her mouth <laughs> in seeing that. And I, I, th I think re relaxes just a little bit again and says, um, look, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to uh, push either of you further than you can really go, but uh, Rain Shadow is a very strict label and Mary has very high expectations for me and for the show and I just want to show that we can work well as a group. No worries. We're gonna bear the water. We're gonna do great. We kind of had a setback, but everyone does at first. So now we're gonna jump the hurdle and keep going. I am so nervous. Very nervous, but I think we got something pretty cool between all of us. I agree. Do you know how many groups have all this drama throughout the history of their, well, band history? This is just the the first bump in the road on your road to success. I know it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the three of you kind of, like, put your heads together and, like, start working kind of more intensely on the, the song together than you even were before and you stay there for a while you, you start work you, you're working for like several hours and it starts to get like darker than you thought it would even outside and I think it's, it's at a certain point Karen says oh, I, I think we need a break for a bit let's let's go sit down and have some tea why don't we and she takes you out into the the living room and goes to make some tea I think like 
Jaden like kind of eyes the consoles that she has lined up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what kind of game would? What's the game in this world? Um, <laughs> is there an idol game? Oh, absolutely. There's gotta be. Like I don't know, like Super Smash Idols or something. <laughs> <laughs> And Jaden, like, Jaden's main is definitely one of the Bob on Bros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah, so you, you flip it on, You fi- I guess, what kind of console would this be on? I think it would probably be on, like, the Switch. If- yeah. Yeah, it does sound like a Switch game. It would game. be, like, kind of a cartoony type game. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you boot up the, the Switch and Karen kind of, like, leans out of the kitchen and gives you a thumbs up to let you know that it's okay. <laughs> And he kind of goes, oh, I'm, I'm, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't ask. I just got really excited. I don't have the new, the new one that came out. No problem at all. She calls from the kitchen. And I think while playing, he just kind of like, he's still, his eyes are still fixed on the screen because he's trying to, he's not great at it. He's not very good at it. Um, he's just the type of guy who plays for fun, not to win. <laughs> but while he's playing, he just kind of to Valerie. Hey, we've, we've got this. You know that, right? Of course, that's that's why we've been practicing and you know working together here. I think we've all been working hard, and we'll keep working hard. And oh wait, have we told Karen about our name? <laughs> oh, actually, that is a good question. Would we have have yeah, told would <laughs> Karen over Disguidal? I'm gonna say probably. Well, you know what. I feel like realistically, yes, but I kind of want to see like <laughs> what it sounds like yeah. for you, for you t- to tell her that, especially considering what happened with the texts during the creation of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Do you want to tell her or should I or or should we should we write it down to show her? Because that's. Mm. Oh, yeah. Let's let's write it down. All right. So you, you go to look for some paper. You go through like there's a. There's like a shelf where you find like some loose paper. It's under some like promotional postcards from a bunch of different um, idol groups, of course. Um, actually, as you're going through the postcards, you find one that actually has the logo of your high school on it. The Fort McNally um, high school logo, whatever that looks like. <laughs> Maybe we'll <laughs> figure out what that crest looks like some other time. But there's a there's a postcard there with the Fort McNally Idol Club logo on it. And th- there's... Some people on it, you don't recognize them, but from the energy they have, you would guess that the girl in front with the seemingly boundless energy and optimism and these reams and reams of wavy blonde hair uh, is probably Amberly. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what you find as you go for <laughs> some scrap paper. Yeah, and probably like with a marker, like a, I don't know, that like pink or purple marker. Oh, for sure. There's every color of marker. Oh yeah, this is Karen we're talking about. That is very including, true. <laughs> including glitter pens. Oh, oh, oh. No, just use use the glitter pen. Yeah, I'm gonna use the glitter pen. <laughs> <laughs> Takes the the glorious of glitter pens and writes out our name, Rhythmix. <laughs> very and nice. When Karen comes back, I'm like standing there. Like I pause the game. I'm standing there with my hands behind my back with mm-hmm. the paper. Va- Valerie's <laughs> standing next to you, and Karen comes out with. Two mugs held carefully by the handles in one hand and one mug held in the other. Uh, one is blue, one is black, and one is multicolored, like a rainbow one. Oh. Oh, okay. So, we did figure out something very important in the in the last club meeting. Mm-hmm. And it took a lot of talking, and we finally... Well, basically, when you're, while you're recovering in a way, we... Came up with a name. Oh, do tell. And she she walks into the the living room to set the the mugs down mm-hmm. as you're <laughs> as you're you like turn with, to keep the paper facing away from yeah. her until the right <laughs> dramatic moment. And in fact, we got some some input from you, I guess. Oh, oh, was that when I butt texted you? Valerie is like watching her closely to figure out, try to figure out if she actually. Knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah, if you psychic, is, <laughs> was it really a butt dial? If you want, one of oh. you can pierce the mask. <laughs> I don't think Jaden would actually like read into it, but <laughs> not that deeply. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, I. 
I think we can just let that be narration and keep sure. going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you wonder, but you don't wonder that deeply about So anyway, so she does look kind of like bemused, like, oh, was that when I butt texted you? Mm-hmm. And Jane's like, okay, three, two, one, and then just shows the piece of paper. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh, ah, uh, I get it, I get it. Mm-hmm. And he, like, points at the second X. That was you. You did that. Yeah, we needed something, and then we got your your butt text with the X. Ah, uh, that was me. Ah. Uh. And she, she kind of points to her, her cheeks in that, like, cute way that, like, Idols do sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm so honored. Oh god, I love Karen. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I need to just say that every so often. Karen's great. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yep, rhythmics. I like it a lot. As it is, it you you do have a very different well mix of rhythms. Yeah, I kind of feel like we're you know a, a real group now, and that's that's pretty cool. Hmm. I think you always were, from from the second you stepped into that club room, and especially when you both stood up to you-know-who. You-know-who? Diana. Oh, uh, yeah. She, she's saying that she thinks you were a real group from the second that Angie and Valerie took a stand against Diana. Valerie gets it, but is... Yeah. Like, still feels still feels bad about what happened previously with the, the, the other time. Mm, yeah, up. fair. She says, well, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's it's official now. Oh, you need a logo, don't you? <gasps> and she, she, her eyes are kind of lighting up. Jaden's are as well. What's an idol group without branding? Wait, so what kind of, but do we, uh, okay. And then he's going to like rush over to where you found all the markers. <laughs> and just bring him over like, what should our logo look like? <laughs> I can't draw. <laughs> It might be fun to decide when the rest of the group is together, I think. Yeah, hopefully we can, you know, get together soon, including you. Yes, but I, I will do up some some ideas. I, I do a lot of audio work, but I also do some visual work, and I could throw some graphics together. Is there anything you can't do? Mm, well, you were offering to play the guitar with me earlier. I'd say that's something I'm not great at. <laughs> For someone who likes music a lot, I can't really carry a tune. Oh, I, I doubt that. You helped a lot with this sheet music. I doubt you can't carry a tune. I've tried. It's just, it's not something that I'm very strong at. I like things that have definable numbers and stats that I can look at. Hmm. A voice is a little less, well, there's, there's a technicality to it, but it's one that I'm not great at tapping into. Well, you know, maybe we can still play a little not to, not to, you know, be good, but just to have fun. Yeah. I think that's fine, too. I do like having fun. Actually, afterwards, can I talk to you about math class? Because I'm kind of struggling. And if you're good with numbers, I could really use your help. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she definitely can do that. Uh, I was just thinking <laughs> in my head, like, sh she's also like, looking over at the, the paused screen and was like, Oh, and by the way, if you if you want to get better with the Bomb Bomb Bros main, uh, you may want to practice some of the right stick combos a little bit more. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll I'll do that. And he kind of like looks over at that, like kind of looks over at the game and just like pretends to practice the right <laughs> combos. I think probably Valley's probably watched him and he's he's just mind button mashing. <laughs> he, he had <laughs> he has no idea what he's doing. And Valerie just automatically takes the, the black cup that was offered and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Jaden takes the rainbow one. Very good. All right, so the three of you play some more video games together. You you do end up going back into the studio for a bit, and Karen brings out, like, like a very relatively, like, simple composition that she said she made a couple years back that she has recorded before, but, like, is has never really been very satisfied with it. So if you want, you can play a little bit of that with her mm -hmm. oh yeah i kind of want to can do i need to roll for this i want to kind of memorize it and see if i can rewrite it later oh. um i think you can just do that i think you're in a good mental oh, okay. space during this session we've already proven that things are going well during this session okay <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, so as he's playing with Karen, I'm assuming Valerie's probably singing along as well. He's just taking note of what everything Karen's written and what they play it and trying to mem- keep it to memory. <laughs> and you can definitely tell that, like, Karen, like, really isn't, like, the, the greatest, like, guitarist. Like, she knows how to play, but, like, her fingers kind of are a little clumsy on the strings. So she's not the greatest at, like, shifting, like, to different keys and whatever. <laughs> Music yeah. talk makes sense for playing the guitar. <laughs> I definitely know how to play a guitar now. <laughs> I totally don't. I don't have to play any instruments. I'm just pulling this out of thin air. <laughs> how late has it gotten to this at this point? Uh, if it's starting to get dark out... Oh, it's it's probably quite late because it is like... It's only September. It's not that late in the year. Uh, so I Ooh. guess maybe it's like, I don't know seven or eight ish like your aunt knows that you're out for a while so she's not going to be yeah. worried about you same goes for for valerie but yeah it is it is getting like closer to like eight ish jane just goes karen you're you're honestly not that bad i uh, i don't know i've i've always i guess it's kind of one of those situations where you have really high standards of taste and just never feel like you can match that you know yeah. And Jane kind of just nods understandingly. Mm-hmm. There's so many talented musicians and singers out there that I've admired, and uh, I, I've tried to get even even a little bit close, but uh, it never seems to get there. And I have practiced a while. It's just not my strong suit, I think. Well... It was fun playing, at least. It was. We can always play just for fun. Yeah. And this definitely sounds way better than it used to. Thank you so much. Thank you for showing us. Not at all. I'm, f- I'm, I'm very glad that you've taken an interest in my humble work. And she gives a little, like, mini bow. Yeah, I usually don't actually play any music or, or sing just for fun either, so that was actually really nice. <laughs> yeah, it is nice that, like, with the, all your, like, idle ambitions and aspirations and, like, the serious business stuff coming up. Just, you haven't gotten much chance to just be musicians jamming. I think Jaden kind of, like, just, he's got a, the biggest smile on his face, like, hearing all of that. Next time we can get everyone together and just play for fun. I think we should do that. Yeah, that actually sounds really fun. I think it will be. And in the middle of this this nice moment... You suddenly hear the doorbell ring. Oh, that's for me, I think. And Karen starts to head up the stairs to see who it is. So as she goes to check on who's at the door, is there anything you want to do while you're waiting? I want to poke my head out and just kind of look up the stairs to see if I can catch a glimpse of who it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need to have the both heads poking around the doorframe. Oh, yeah. oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you peek up the stairs. Again, it's a fairly long staircase, so... Uh, but you can definitely still see out the door up there. And you definitely recognize who's at the door. You see some fluffy orange pigtails and glasses. <laughs> and you hear some squealing as Karen gets... This is a bear hugger here. <laughs> Karen gets bear hugged at the top of the stairs by a familiar face. I think you know who this is. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Amber Lee. Hi! Oh my god, Karen, I heard what happened. I saw the video. Oh my god, are you okay? You look fine. You look... Like, wow, you look great, actually. Like, wow, oh my god. And you hear her, like, talking kind of in this fashion as Karen, like, reassures her that, yes, she's fine as she <laughs> takes her down into the <laughs> living room. I can't remember. Do, does Jaden know who Amber Lee is? Um, he <laughs> would only know her through her writing because she did write the scavenger hunt. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know if he would immediately clue on to that's who she is, but, like, yeah, that might be his first clue. Could- I was going to yeah. suggest that I, I think Amber Lee has a strong enough personality that you would at least think of the connection between the way those clues were written and seeing her in person. And just like, and say, like, why does she sound... Wait, she's... You can practically hear the tildes and ex- exclamation marks as she talks. Yeah. <laughs> she's the one that... She's yep. the responsible for the... Mm-hmm. Oh, No. Oh my god. I'm gonna trade you reactions. I love Jaden's. <laughs> Jaden's so much. <laughs> and Valerie too, for that matter, but Jaden's mm-hmm. reaction right now. Just 
he remembers that scavenger hunt. It was the worst. I think Valerie steps away from the corner and goes, Yeah, yeah, she's she's the one. Oh, okay, so... Wait, why is she here? I mean, I, they're friends. She graduated, but... I mean, she and Karen were in the Idol Club before, so... I guess she's just coming by to check. Should we... Should we say something? Yeah, I think that would probably be polite. <laughs> so yes, Karen brings Amberly down the stairs, who's practically, like, bouncing down the steps to get <laughs> down there. And her eyes sparkle as she sees, uh, as she sees Valerie, and, like, she doesn't recognize Jaden, but she's always pleased to see a, f- a friendly face. And she goes, Valerie, oh, it's so nice to see you. Oh, were you, oh, were you hanging out with Karen today? Oh, and who's your friend? Uh, hi. This is... This is Jaden. He's also joined the club. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I heard from Miss Doyle that someone else did the scavenger. Oh, oh, did you have fun? And think- she looks very <laughs> hopeful at you. Jaden, like, just sucks in a deep breath, like, yes. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> and she would do that thing where, like, she uh, balls her fists in excitement, but she can't because she's actually holding something. She's holding a big Tupperware container, and you can kind of see through the, like, semi-transparent sides that it looks like she brought cookies. Uh, <laughs> I think Jaden just, like, complete his forced, polite expression completely melts away, and he's just genuine excitement at <laughs> the cookies. I'm like, wait, are, are, those, are those cookies? Yes! Oh, I can't... Karen, I just, I, I know, I knew that you were, you weren't feeling great and that stuff had been bad, but like, I, I just thought that I, I really wanted to come over and see you and I wanted to make something special for you to make sure that you were feeling extra good for, for whenever you're feeling up to going to school again. And here, and she, she gives the Tupperware box to Karen and Karen goes, oh, oh, and she, she pulls the top off and they're little, like, they look like little, like, butter cookies. Uh, I don't know if you know what spritz cookies are, but they're like little cookies that you make with a cookie press, and they look kind of like flowers, and these ones in particular oh, yeah. are decorated with blue sprinkles, which, <laughs> between this and the blue mug, you get the sense that that's probably Karen's favorite color. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you remembered. And Karen smiles at, at Amberly. <laughs> You bet I did. Oh, I, I I saw how much you loved these the last time we had that Christmas performance, and I just I knew I had to make them for you. Oh, it's it's kind of amazing that I found the time to make them, honestly, because like oh my god, the, the design program at my school, it's way more grueling than I thought it would be. Oh, but I I found the time last night, and I, and I whipped them up, and hopefully they'll be they'll be good. And oh, I hope you I hope you all enjoy them. Oh, I, we we can have some. Um, I, oh, I mean they're for Karen, so I just no, they're for everybody, silly. I made so many. I kind of like turns to Karen. Mm-hmm. But so does Valerie. Karen shrugs. They're for everybody, silly. She made so many. Oh, thank you. T- she takes one of the cookies out and smiles like a very warm smile, especially for Karen, as she like bites in and goes, oh, "I haven't had these in so long." Thank you so much for making these. Jaden definitely bites down to it, just pure excitement on his face. Valerie takes one and is probably not as uh, overcome with emotion, but <laughs> appreciates it. Uh, Karen says, these are my favorite, my absolute favorite. My mum used to make these all the time. Uh, and Amberly goes like, oh, I knew there must have been a reason you liked them so much. Oh, I'm so glad. Hmm. Hey, can you like give me the recipe when you have time? Oh, absolutely. Here, I can I can see if I can pull it up. Just a sec. And and she starts like scrolling through her phone, which is of course like a Hello Kitty kind of like phone case with the little <laughs> like rubber cat sticking up out of the top kind of thing. While she's scrolling, she just says, "So, I I guess apart from well, the thing, like how has how have things been? How has the first week of your new club been?" It's been a lot. Yeah, a, a lot. A lot's been going on. I guess it's it's too bad you couldn't meet the other members. I guess we're not really sure what's going on with with Anne, but there's also Queen Bee, who you know, of course, is in the the video that's been going around too. But yeah, I guess 
yeah, like how, how is how is she feeling? I guess because she was like responsible for well, uh, and she nods her head towards Karen, and Karen shrugs. It's like it's fine, <laughs> but she clearly seems to understand that it was a mistake. Like she wouldn't like she's not blaming that on mm-hmm. Queen Bee. Is she is she okay? Are you all o- are you all okay? I guess I should ask. Like it's not just Karen. I guess. Yeah, we're fine. I mean, I'm fine. We're just. You know, we've been we've been talking about how these things happen, apparently. Yeah, it's just a bump in the road, and we've got over it, so it's going to keep going forward. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad that you that you're learning that sooner than later, honestly, because there are a lot of bumps in the road to being an idol sometimes, and it's it's really kind of really kind of stinks sometimes, you know, just big old stinkeroony that that's. Well, how that is sometimes, and she looks kind of uncomfortable. But <laughs> I think it's it's definitely all worth it for for the good times in the end. So I'm I'm glad that you're sort of working through it, and you understand that like there's still lots of good times ahead. Yeah, like today we just finished working on a demo for our gig, and we just kind of played for fun, and I don't know, it was nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you actually did you actually get Karen to play with you? And she like looks like raises an eyebrow at Karen. <laughs> Yeah, she's actually pretty good. Haven't haven't you heard her play? A, a little bit, but she's always like so like shy about it, like in a way that she usually isn't. Like <laughs> that's amazing. Like Karen, 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 <laughs> and she kind of like <laughs> gives her like a little like arm around the shoulder kind of thing. Like oh my god, <laughs> and she and Karen's like it went fine. It was fun. That was the important thing. It was fun. Uh, and I think while this is happening, Valerie gets an idea and takes out her phone and says, Hey, since since you're here, we should, you know, take a picture to let Angie know that you stopped by. And, you know, we can tell Queen Bee who was, or show her who was responsible for the scavenger hunt. Oh, sure, I'd love to. And yeah, the, they bo- the both of them <laughs> nod. <laughs> she, the, the implication of that kind of flies over her head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I think Valerie tries to find, like, a non-awkward way to take a group selfie, but with four people, there, it just ends up, there's there's absolutely no way to do it except to all squish together. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not awkward for anyone else, but... Yeah, Jaden's what about it. What ends up happening is everyone just squishing together to take a group selfie while Valerie holds up the phone and, and tries to look disinterested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is everybody's expression they're going for in this? I think he's, I think Jaden, his MO is excitement, so he's just excited. He's cheesing it up, grinning. Probably got like, probably giving Karen bunny ears behind her head. Aww. <laughs> yeah, so Valerie looks disinterested, but probably like there's a little smile in the, the very corner of her mouth. And Karen uh, is low enough that bunny ears will work in the frame. Like, <laughs> she kind of does that thing where she's low enough in the frame that it looks like she's kind of like peering up from beneath it. <laughs> and Amberly is, is doing like, she's not doing bunny ears, but she is doing like a similar kind of peace sign thing with both hands. Oh, this is adorable. I kind of want to see all of this now. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get that all taken. Somehow people manage to squish in and, and make that happen. And Amberly says like, oh yeah, definitely make sure to send that to everybody. Oh, I, I definitely want a copy. Sure, sure. I mean, what's your number? Oh yeah, sure. I can I can exchange that with you, and the, you, you sort of like with your phones mm-hmm. exchange contact yeah. information. I think Valerie, you have Amberly's information already, but Jaden wouldn't, so you can get that mm-hmm. from her. And I guess it, the night is kind of wrapping up at this point, so the mm-hmm. you all kind of talk for a bit longer, and the night starts to wind to an end. Amberly finishes up, I guess, by saying like, "Anyway, it was it's so good to see you and make sure that you're that you're doing okay, Karen. I'm glad that you are. I'm so glad that you all enjoyed the cookies. Let me know. I'll, I'll send you that recipe, Jaden, right away. And uh, I guess I'll go back to the mountain of homework that I have. <laughs> She's sweating a little bit as she thinks about it. <laughs> mm, it was nice to see you, Amberly, and of course it was nice to see the both of you all afternoon and evening. I guess it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that we did too. Oh, Valerie, you said that they needed the demo tomorrow. Did you want to see us or just hear the demo? Just hear the demo should be fine. I'm, I'm going to be working with them probably all afternoon. Okay. If you need anything from us, just let us know. Sure, of course. 
And with that, you say your goodbyes to everybody. Karen shows you all back up to the top of the step, gives you a little wave, and waves you off into the night. And I think after we leave, Valerie starts to walk and realizes that it's maybe gotten late. Uh, not, not too late to take a bus back, but still, like, opens her phone, posts the picture to Disc Idol, sends a copy to Amber Lee, sends a copy to Cynthia, and then messages her, her sister Alice and says... Sorry, need pick up longer than expected, hanging out with friends. And I don't think that Valerie notices this, but Alice would, that this is uh, the first time that she's said uh, friends instead of the group. Aww. Uh, I was not ready for that. <laughs> and you get a text back from Alice that says, All good, all good, glad you had fun with the you, just the one letter. <laughs> And a little heart. Uh, and is, is Jaden bi- biking back, or is he going to get his aunt to pick him up? I think he's going to bike back. <laughs> All right. Probably he texts his aunt saying, like, on my way home, had a lot of fun with everybody, and then like hops on his bike and starts cycling. Awesome. Yeah, your, your aunt texts you back and is like, I'll see you soon as you bike home with a grin so bright it could light up the night around you. And as Valerie waits for Alice to pick her up, Um, She's scrolling through her phone and looking at the picture that they just took again. And as she looks at the picture more, she notices that there's something about the picture she didn't notice before. And that's sort of in the background behind the four of you. You see what looks like a very faint, but definitely there, black sphere. Like a fuzzy black sphere. Hmm. Thank you so much for listening to Super Idols RPG. Our cast for today was Dana Alexa as Valerie Pierce, Draconix as Jaden Lott, and Aaron Cerise as the GM. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons Blake1995, Icicle Prism, Liv, and Matthew F. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is used under license from Gemendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad, and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, Freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library. If you liked this episode, please consider liking and commenting on the YouTube upload, or leaving us a review on your podcasting platform of choice. You can also support this podcast monthly on Patreon at patreon.com slash Aaron Cerise, or through a one-time donation on Ko-fi at ko-fi.com slash Aaron Cerise. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay Roll Dice, a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA plus creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Stay tuned for a promo from our network partner, Sword of Symphonies. Thank you all for listening, stay well, and goodbye until next time. One time on Sword of Symphonies, our captain played an accordion number for a demon as a backing track to the story the demon was telling him. This one time on Sword of Symphonies, there was a rodeo rider on a giant eagle bird thing, and it was rad. She's going to take her jacket and try to put it over the bird's eyes, like create a blindfold. I would once again like to reiterate what could possibly go wrong. This one time on Sword of Symphonies, the crew dug up some buried treasure. No, look at this moss. It's attached to a shovel. Look, I love all three of you, but Tissa is my favorite. (laughs) My favorite part of Sword of Symphonies is the majesty of the spellcasting. Brilliant carnival. Starlight stars. Flying shark. Knife pain. (laughs) Fry's bolt. So if you'd like seafaring adventure, a lot of game design talk, music written in-house, and a lot of whatever that was just now, join us every week on Sword of Symphonies.